one. Before you go on to the lecture that reviews all the different kinds of critical theories we'll be using this week, um, I wanted to start off with looking at critical theories um, through the medium of history or archaeology so you can get some physical ideas of some of these more abstract terms we'll be looking at, see if you find this useful. So this is all going to be about um, how do we learn about Egyptian life. And critical theories are like different perspectives that we can take to gather information on different um, aspects of life in ancient Egypt. And I'm using here material from um, the Giza pyramid complex and the necropolis that surrounds it. So if I'm interested in the pyramids themselves, that would be one perspective I would have. I could study the pyramids and learn all about them. And that would tell me certain things about Egyptian life. Or maybe I'm interested in the historical documentation that accompanies an excavation. So there's lots of paperwork to be done, like maps and a long lists of equipment found in burial chambers, for example, and object registers. So every time they find an object, they have to log it in with a description of where they found it. And even photographs from the excavations, photographs of what they found and also of the people who um, participated in the excavation. Maybe I'm interested in the cemeteries themselves. What would that tell me about ancient Egyptian life that would be different than what the pyramids would tell me? So I could look at the cemeteries, and in these cemeteries we see these mastabas that they're where um, the royal tombs were, and tombs of administrators and um, aristocracy, I guess you could say. So maybe I'm interested in the mastabas themselves, or maybe I'm interested in what are called slab stelae. Um, these are like our modern day tombstones that would tell us about the person um, buried in that um, tomb, in that mastaba. Maybe I'm interested in something entirely different. Maybe I'm interested in the materials that these mastabas or pyramids are built of. Um, maybe I'm interested in the burial chapels themselves, not the entire mastaba, but just the burial chapels and what's on those particular the sarcophagi that are found within them, the different styles of sarcophagi and how they're made. Or maybe I'm interested in the development of canopic jars. These are the jars that held the organs of the deceased that they would need in the afterlife, and they changed over time. Maybe I'm interested in what I can learn about Egyptian life through the evolution of hieroglyphics. And we see some of the hieroglyphics here from that previous slab stela. Um, what can I learn from wall paintings on these chapels, right? I can see all kinds of activities that are done. I can examine wall pa uh, paintings to see what I can learn about the ancient Egyptians. I can look at carvings. There are different kinds of carvings. This is sunken carving, where you see the lines go in. And then there's raised relief carving, which are often painted. What's the difference? When would they do one? When would they do the other? What does it have to do with Egyptian life? Maybe I'm interested in the tools that I find in, in the when I'm excavating. What do these tools and the changes in what the uh, tools are made of, what does that tell me about life? See, these are all different perspectives. What about statuary? What does that tell me? Well, these are rock cut statues. And this is a limestone statue, freestanding. This is a, a mother and a daughter, perhaps. And then we have these odd, what they call reserve heads, that they're not sure what they're for. What can I learn about these burial chambers and Egyptians' ideas about the afterlife through these heads? What about if I'm interested in gender? What were the different roles of men and women in ancient life? Again, I'd look at wall paintings and statuary and lots of other things. And for example, in this wall painting, I can see that females are always painted in this light yellow color and males are always painted in this reddish color. I can learn about different levels of society if that's what I'm interested in. Maybe that's my main focus is on the different depictions of levels of society. For example, here I have servants tending a fire. This one's kneading bread. Um, the different kinds of carving and statuary are different for the elite. That's the kind of statuary we would normally associate with ancient Egypt. But everyday people had statuary as well, and this is what theirs might look like. What about the different activities? Well, I can learn about what kind of animals they ate through these activities. For example, these are 
um, hunting um, ducks and that sort of thing in the marshes. And here I see uh, people going out on boats. I can learn what kind of boats they had, how they were built, what, how did they propel these boats, how many people did they hold. Maybe I'm interested in ancient Egyptian clothing. For example, um, in this photograph, we see uh, obviously the remains of a skeleton. And it's hard to see here, but uh, the square is highlighting a whole bunch of beads. They're kind of long beads. And they were able to reconstruct the dress that these beads would have made from paintings that they found. So maybe I'm interested in fashion. What do people wear? Maybe that's my particular interest. Or maybe I'm interested in jewelry. Again, from the paintings and from objects that are found, um, I can learn about ancient Egyptian jewelry. Pottery, very important. Pottery tells us a lot. Changes in pottery over the years can help um, scholars date what's actually else in that tomb with this particular kind of pottery. And we can see how they, um, how they served meals or um, what kind of jars held oils and ointments and just all kinds of different things. Pottery is really important and that might be my area of interest.